Angelina Jolie is opening up about her latest health struggles for the first time after a tumultuous year. For September's issue of Vanity Fair, the Hollywood star reveals she was diagnosed with Bell's palsy in 2016. The condition is a temporary facial paralysis. It affects about 40,000 Americans each year. The actress says she has now recovered. Jolie said, quote, sometimes women and families put themselves last until it manifests itself in their own health. Our Dr. David Agus joins us from Los Angeles. Good morning. So what are some of the causes of Bell's palsy? Well, Bell's palsy is a case of the hole not being big enough. A nerve comes off the brain through a small hole in the, a hole in the skull, and when it gets inflamed, its function is compromised. And it can get inflamed from predominantly, we think, viral infections. Mm -hmm. Um, Angelina, D David says that acupuncture helped her recover, that she used as, as a treatment. Is that a common way to treat it, and are there other methods? Well, most of the time, it resolves on its own, three to four weeks, sometimes up to six months. You can give steroids or antivirals, which can probably shorten the duration. But acupuncture has been tried in several trials, and unfortunately, it didn't work. I think time itself is the great healer for Bell's palsy. And generally, how long does it take? I mean, does it vary among individuals? It varies among individuals. You know, first described in the 1820s by a Scottish surgeon whose last name was Bell. And sometimes it takes two to three weeks to go away and sometimes up to several months. But that inflammation, when it goes down, the nerve starts working in most cases. But in this Vanity Fair interview, she seems to suggest that it was caused by stress. Is that one of the causes? Well, certainly when you're stressed, viruses can come out. We know you can get shingles or a reoccurrence of chickenpox when you're very stressed. And so there may be an association with viruses and stress, but it's hard to know. This is a pretty common disorder, Bell's palsy. Are there long-term effects? In a very small number of people, the nerve won't re regain its former function, and then things like uh, botulinum toxin or surgery can help in those cases. But in almost 90% of cases, there's full recovery. I have heard, too, back to Nora's point, that stress is a very big factor. Are you saying that stress is not the most common cause? Well, stress itself doesn't cause Bell's palsy. Oh, yeah. I mean, what we think is that it's a viral infection of the nerve coming through that hole in the, uh, the skull. Um, mm -hmm. But can stress lower your resistance to viruses? Potentially. Yeah. David, this is off the wall and, and not part of this conversation, but I was listening uh -oh. this morning. I know, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. I was listening this morning to, to the BBC on radio, and they were talking about a, a medical journal in Britain in which had said that the idea of, of taking... Um, uh, by taking uh, medicine and, and not taking all the pills, antibodies, for example, uh, is no longer necessarily uh, good advice. Well, it's a big debate, uh, you know, among doctors now and in the scientific literature whether you should complete an entire course of antibiotics. So say I prescribe you a week of a Z-Pak, and after three, four days, you're better. Do you have to do the next three days? We have thought that you want to kill all the bacteria right. and that you would get resistance if you don't. But in this case, it's debatable. And so there's data on both sides. All right. Thank you, David. Always Thank good you. to see you, Dr. David Agus. Good Thanks to see a lot. you guys.